Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today, just doing a little bit of inking on the Blackstone comic and having some fun here in Manga Studio. You like that? I finally said it the right way. Everybody gets on to me because I always call it Manga Studio, which now it's called Clip Studio Paint. So, you know, I don't know if we should get too attached to any of these names because apparently they're just going to keep changing the name on us and who knows, next year it could be called really cool inking comic software thing I'm a jig. I don't know. Who knows? I better not be the one to come up with the name, obviously. But, uh, yeah, so inking in this program. Gotta love it. It's always fun. And I figured I would talk about the process a little bit because I'm pretty much bored. And I want to yap at you guys while I sit here and work on my comic book. So, yeah, there's that. Um, so, yeah, so what do I do when I ink my comic, uh, I guess, would be the the topic. Or how do I do it? Um, you know, one thing that I get on here a lot with this channel is, you know, hey, I can't get clean lines. Um, I've been using my tablet for so long and, and I can't seem to get my inking lines looking the way that I want. So, to that, I would say uh, you have to try to figure out uh, your speed, your mechanics, you know, and, and like, like all else, I'm always going to say this, uh, time heals all things with art. So, the more you draw, the more you ink, the better you're going to get. Obviously, we all know that one. Um, but, the other thing is to really be aware of not only your settings of your tablet or device that you're using, the speed in which you work is very important, I think. And I'll show you what I mean there. So, uh, as soon as I get to a part where I feel like I can show you what I mean. And I don't like that. Let's hit Control Z. Alright, so, for instance, uh, the way in which I work is going to be in direct relation to the, the way that I've developed my uh, ability. So, for instance, like I've mentioned in a lot of my videos, I have a lot easier time pulling a downward line than I do sideways across the screen. And somebody even made a nice little comment in one of the videos. I thought it was pretty cool. They said, are you left-handed? You know, because you guys can't necessarily see my my hand when I'm drawing because I do uh, screen recorded videos. And uh, they were right. I am left-handed. So kudos to you. That was amazing that you figured that out. And they said, well, because I read somewhere that left-handers have a harder time doing a, a line straight across the screen. Oh, I, actually, that one was pretty good, though. But... Yeah, I generally can't. I'm going to get more of a bend when I want it straight. And I just, I don't know. The the way that I hold my pen, uh, blame this on my, my teacher when I was a kid. Because they were always like trying to make me tilt my hand uh, when I was writing. And you know, the binders for a left-hander, uh, they're made for right-handing obviously. Right-handing, right-handers. And uh, it hurt. So you would tilt your hand to get off the binders. I don't know if that's the only reason, but that's... One of the reasons why when you see a left-hander and they got the weird funky wrist thing going on like this and they're holding their pen like this. And you're like, why are they holding their pen like that? It's because of the binders, I think. Can you get, are you able to see that picture? <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Maybe I should stop there. At least that's what I'm thinking. Or I was trying not to get the back of my hand all smudgy, which I always did. But I thought it was cool that somebody was uh, had the vision there to see, you know, well, hey, that's probably why you, you know, because I was mentioning in one of my videos that I have a hard time drawing lines to the side. I do better up and down and and uh, especially pulling downward on the, uh, the pen strokes or whatever. So it was just kind of neat. You know, one of the things I love about YouTube is just everybody's collective efforts and pitching in ideas and it's just really powerful and really pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So, you know, you need to be aware of your mechanics when you're, when you're doing this stuff and maybe you just haven't quite figured that out about your style. The other thing is quick pulls. I've mentioned that before as well. This is probably all a little bit redundant, but you know, for newbies or people that just came to the channel, it's sometimes it's worth uh, repeating this stuff. So the quick pull is going to be like, you know, uh, more sweeping passes. I would say like this arm. Uh, hold R to rotate the screen, and say I want this line right here a bit thicker. 
I can easily obviously just keep feather on the line and pull down like that. I've gotten pretty good at where I don't do the, um, I don't get the tail of the line poking off like this or something. You know, I don't get a scribbly line. But if you don't, and you haven't quite developed that ability to feather like that without, you know, messing it up or something, then you might be more the, the style where you pull better in one pass. You know, I'm not. I mean, so I know that about myself. I still try to use that method uh, quite a bit. But I'm a little bit better at feathering. So that's where I pull multiple passes uh, over top of one another. So that's just something to test out about yourself. And then the direction in which you pull. And also the amount of detail. Like if you, you might need to pan back a little bit more. You might need to tighten in a bit more. Um, I would definitely try to pan back as much as possible with your work because uh, you can actually waste a ton of time by zooming in too far to your ink work and then pulling back and realizing, oh, wait, those lines are way too thin. Um, that cross-hatching I did there and that part of the hand, that's not going to work. It's it's not even going to be noticeable when uh, it becomes a printed comic or whatever. You know, So you got to be very aware of the size of the lines in respect to what you're creating so you know even there I was, I was in pretty tight to that hand where we'll say on my screen right now I know we can't adjust this based on what you're looking at but on my screen right now this is a, about the actual size of a page so you can imagine how small that hands gonna be when it's done so I need to really be aware of that and so when I zoom in like this that's not the way to be inking that hand you know, that's the way to be inking that hand if that was the cover of the book. <laughs> Just a big hand, you know. So it's little things like that to keep in mind as well when you're doing this stuff so that you don't just waste a tremendous amount of time. Uh, so what else can I help you with as far as inking? Let me think here. Um, uh, keep in mind that you can you can ink with uh, white just as easily as you can ink with, with black on here. I mean, you can... Even in traditional methods, you just have to get a few different tools and, and get used to using them. Uh, there's a lot of artists that do some amazing stuff with the whiteout pens and um, whiteout itself and uh, white white paint. I can't remember what they what they call it. Um, maybe it's just called white paint. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I do so much digital now. I don't know all the tools, but they they do some amazing stuff with it. Like one of the one of the neatest things I remember learning when I was inking uh, scenes and things like that and doing pieces uh, in the beginning. Uh, I didn't have digital means back then. And I remember being shown the uh, the way to do stars with a toothbrush and white paint. And I'll tell you, man, I, I was just so amazed. <laughs> you know, the, up until then, uh, this is sad to say, I was, you know, still a newbie artist. Like really struggling with this thumbnail. Um, I was I was a newbie artist and I was uh, I was doing stars like this. I would draw each star. Then I go back and I would ink around the star until I got to it. Yeah, that was uh, that shows you how dedicated I am to my craft, though, because I would do it. And I love space uh, science fiction uh, storylines, so I I did it quite a bit actually. And uh, I mean that's my character here, Blackstone. He's an you know alien creature type dude. So, um, so there have been a lot of stars that I would have to painstakingly draw around. And when somebody showed me that little toothbrush trick, my, my mind just opened right up. I'm like, oh my God, how was I not doing this this way? And, uh, and it's really fun to do. It's, it's yields these really great results. So try that out. If you got a extra toothbrush, don't use your, your primary one for sure. And, uh, yeah, throw some white paint on it and flick it on a, you know, black background and it's a, it's a huge time saver. Uh, so that kind of stuff is like really great and easy to do with digital. You can make, uh, you know, a star brush. Um, I think I, I might have one. I've got this Kirby Crackle one in my set there, but uh, you, I, I'll make a star brush and actually update the, uh, the brushes. These are actually available on my Gumroad, by the way. Shameless plug time. Sorry, I had to do it. So anyways, um, I'll end up making a star brush and I'll add it to the set or whatever. Or maybe I'll make that one a free download or something. But um, but yeah, so you can you can do that so well with digital. But it's it's figuring out those different things with 
uh, your art um, that, that just makes all the difference in the world. Because like I said, up until then, I was painstakingly inking around every star like a like a bit of a dum-dum. So, yeah. But hey, it's nice to look back and realize how far you've come and, and the things that you've learned along the way. That was one of them. And that's why it's so important to study other artists and, and why things like YouTube are so great. And, you know, because you'll watch what somebody's doing and go, whoa, what? I didn't realize you could do it that way. And it, it, a lot of times it's something so simplistic and you look at it and go, God, why, why didn't that occur to me? You know, why wasn't I picking up on that one? But uh, just the way it is sometimes. So, so yeah, that's, that's one of the things I do. If I ever struggle, I immediately go to looking at some of my, uh, you know, favorite artists and uh, art buds and things like that. Um, you know, one in particular too, uh, it's not so much on inking, but it still does just like, gorgeous uh digital paint work and stuff like that and he's on my featured channel list is a, a buddy of mine chris scalf and he's shown me a lot he actually uh helped me get a lot uh better at at digital work you know so digital painting and stuff like that he's he's amazing with that stuff and uh I learned so much from him so be sure to check out his channel um and it's always good to you know help you know, share other people's work. That's another great thing about artists, you know, um, that we can say, hey, you know, somebody will ask me a question, they'll go, man, how do I do this? You know, like um, one in particular, like he does these really amazing dragons and people are like, oh, Rob, you should do a, you know, one of a dragon. You should, you should paint a dragon. And I'm thinking, man, my dragons kind of suck. Like <laughs> I need to get better at them. And I, I, I like doing dragons, so I need to work on them more. But he immediately comes to mind, so I just say, hey, well, go check out his stuff, because he's like, you know, he's got dragons really down. So you're going to learn a lot more from him watching his stuff than you're going to immediately learn from me, because I'm still kind of, uh, you know, trying to get that right in my work. So, so yeah, so check him out, and hopefully you like his stuff. I'm sure you will. And what else? What else can I... Uh, try to help you with when it comes to inking. I'm trying to think of the different comments I get when it comes to inking. Um, one of the things I guess I can point out too is whenever I'm doing this stuff, just so you know the thought process, you know, and I'm not saying this stuff is all coming out great. It's basically I'm trying to get a nice variety of line work, but also where if you pan back like this and I take away the blue line, it's vivid enough you know there's good contrast like once I get to the background and all that I'll make sure that there's enough contrast uh, you know because the main focal point I would say is is kind of going you know right through here you want to see that you know Blackstone's kind of saving them and you know knocking back the damage or whatever making sure it doesn't hit the the good doctor here and you know so that's kind of the the focal point so I want to make sure he jumps off the scene which he's breaking the panel so that should be easy enough to do uh, and then I want to make sure by the time I start inking the background that I don't put the same line weight that I have through the character here in the background. So that's something else I would say take note of. You want nice uh, variety in line weight. So you can see as I pencil, the line weight's kind of all kind of the same. You know, there's there's light and dark there, but it's kind of all blends in a little bit more. And that's where when I go to inking, I try to separate that and add a bit more depth and variety to that work so just wanted to point that out now the other thing that i like to do i'm getting ready to do these lines right here and i want to make sure they have a nice curve going up the leg so it looks more natural to the way that the shading would go against that leg so i might add a new layer over top grab uh my detail my, my detail and brush i think so yeah right there I wish they would make that where it highlights better. I could barely see that. But all right, anyways, that's just me complaining. So the beauty of doing this is like I can throw these lines in a little bit, uh, even though I'm messing them up. Um, I can throw these lines in there a little bit uh, more forgiving, easier, I guess, because it's on a, its own layer. So I don't have to worry too much or at all. It, and and it, it, you, know, you, should, you know, I don't have to worry at all because it's digital, but... By adding this extra layer, I can really just, you know, I don't have to worry at all because I can just simply erase back. This is also a good way to do it in case you want to uh, grab like the transparent version of this brush 
and then throw these little line breaks in there. I like doing that more when there's a separate layer because I won't accidentally hit any of this. See that, how it's not affecting that. So now I can take that, I actually got a couple of them going, I can hit Command E and merge them down my, to my original inks layer once I feel like I got it where I want. And you can really just repeat that process. So again, that's something I use more if I'm experimenting and I experiment a lot in my work, so I, I would say I use that effect quite a bit. And then past that, I just try to do a nice variety of lines. I probably go a little bit too crazy with my lines at times, but to me, I can just always edit digital work really well or you know pretty easily. So I'll do this quite a bit, and then I'll just, at the very end, if I have to, I'll white some of it out or I'll edit it and try to make it better at the end. So... So that's really all I do. And like, you know, even something like this, I can block this all in, you know, because it, it would be in shadow, at least part of it, because I'm trying to show that this side's darker than the area up here. So I could block all this in pretty heavily at first. And then say, okay, well, maybe I'm going to do a little bit of line break right there. Maybe, you know, there's a little bit of edge lighting, because see how it, the shape almost changes now. And it doesn't look like the edge of the, the coat or whatever. So I can go back with the transparent here. Or just white. It doesn't matter. I guess I'll do transparent. And I could just... No, I guess I do got to do white. And I could just do a little bit of like the edge light or whatever. You know, just a tiny little piece to show that it rounds over right about there. So I can kind of play with that a little bit. You know, it's not real important, but... And again, you know, would you really see it back there? I don't know, but it's easy to do that is what I'm getting at. So I do that quite a bit in my work as well. All right, what else? Uh, I guess I could do this rock texture. This is always fun. Like, you know, you see I just threw this in really messy, you know, and then now that I'm at the part where I want to refine it, I'll start doing, you know, more angular lines here and there. And then I'll just try to make it look a little bit cooler and more like a, a rock or a broken up piece of brick. I don't know what, what this is really. So I'll get in there and just texture it a little bit more. We just start with a, a thicker line in a couple spots like this. And then I'll just feather out a couple little lines. Like that. Yeah, that's really it. I mean, I just kind of repeat that same thought process. So angular lines. Uh, another thing I've been trying to do more in my work is breaking up the lines more. So you got, a, like say, a thicker line, a little thinner line, break it up, thicker line here. And... The only real thing I can mention there is that it's it's really helpful to do wherever you, you picture light hitting. So say it's darker on this side, but say right up here it's getting some light. You could do that thinner line right there. And yeah, it just, again, it gives more variety and makes it look a little bit more interesting. You know, just you just really want to fight the urge to trace this same weight line around everything. That's a good way to make everything look boring and flat and just, you know, no fun. So just mix it up. So yeah, so little breaks here. And you can see I'm not really sticking to the, the sketch. The sketch was just a very rough kind of prelude to what I'm doing here. And, you know, I, I've drawn this same rock texture probably a hundred times. So when I go to sketch it, I really just throw it in because I pretty much know that when I go to ink it, I'm just going to do what I do, you know, or have done, and just kind of fake it. So it's, there's no sense in, you know, refining this little chunk of rock flying through the air uh, when I know that I, I could just kind of fake it and do whatever looks cool when I get to the inking. Hopefully that makes sense. I, I Like I've mentioned a lot of times on this uh, channel, I look at everything like this, like a like a relay race, uh, that you're just kind of painting in uh, cliff, uh, rough notes to 
the next person that's going to handle the next stage, even if it's you and you're penciling, inking, and coloring and all that, you, you can kind of just lead up to certain things and not uh, refine it all the way. And if you're working with another artist, it's really cool because then it gives them more creative freedom to drop something in and really, you know, really put their spin on it. Uh, and then you get, you know, in my opinion, you get some of the best work that way. So it's, uh, you know, it's nice when you can do that. So yeah, just mixing it up a bit, throwing a few different lines in there, you know, and then I get in there and do, you know, some of the line work like this, little bits of shading, not too much. I don't want to waste too much time on something that's more of a background element like this, but a little bit of this stuff goes a long ways. So I'll throw a little bit of that in. And they're more than likely this would all be in shadow over here, but I'll probably just do, you know, some little line work. I can even take the brush down a few sizes with the bracket keys here. And do some just little thinner ones like this. And this is just, again, kind of texturing. Putting some, uh, randomized effects in there that's it so really that was i didn't time that but it was probably too long even for that little rock piece but you know that's inking is time consuming at least for me anyways it's just always been one of the slower things about my art but but i enjoy it so there it is so that's some of the inking that i would do hopefully that's shed a little bit of light on the topic for you so thanks very much for stopping by and watching the channel today i appreciate that and if you got a certain topic you'd like to see covered, just please put that in the comment section below and that's what I'll bring to you. And please remember that I have a Gumroad page with custom brushes and video tutorials. You can check that out. And also a Patreon page to help me support the work that I do here. Both links will be in the description box below. So as always, thanks for stopping by. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.